Welcome back, Algebra 1. This is the final section or the final lesson for 5.4. So this is just um, a review of what we've been talking about in 5.4, putting it all together. I challenge you to do pages 15 and 16 for practice. So before we go over those answers, I want to just review uh, the, all the success criteria for transformations. So there's six crucial pieces of information to do a successful transformation. The first one is if you are adding to the outside of the absolute value, that is going to translate or move it up k units. If you're subtracting outside of the absolute value, that's going to move it down. It's going to translate it down k units. If you're adding inside the absolute value, that moves it to the left, left h units. And then subtracting inside the absolute value moves it to the right h units. You have a reflection over the x-axis if there's a negative out in the front of the absolute value. And if there's a number in front of the absolute value, that is going to change the slope. It's going to be a compression if this number out here is a fraction. It will be a stretch if it's a whole number. So I would challenge you to make sure you know all six of those rules. Commit those to memory and be able to put them into practice. All right, let's go over your answers for pages 15 and 16. If you haven't done this yet, go ahead and stop the video and do pages 15 and 16. Otherwise, let's check your work. So we're going to describe the translation, and then we're going to graph it. So we're gonna describe first and then graph. So just by looking at this function rule here, I see the minus four on the outside, which tells me it's going to move down four. And that's, that's what is meant by describing. You're just saying, how is it translating? This is moving down four. So we'll go ahead and do that, move it down four, Here's your parent function, one, two, three, four. That's your new vertex. And remember the slope is one over one. There's no number in front, so if you just assume it's one over one, up one over one. Okay. And there is the translated function, absolute value function. All right, next one. We're adding four inside, so that's going to move it to the left four. So right here, one, two, three, four to the left. Same slope of one over one. And there is your graph. Okay, next one here, adding five on the outside of the absolute value is going to be translating it up five. And there is your graph there. And then number four, subtracting three on the inside is going to move it to the right three. go. All right, five. Five has a vertical and horizontal translation, so this minus one on the inside is going to move it right one, and the plus two on the outside is going to move it up two. So right one, up two, and then that slope is just one over one still. There's your graph. Next one, 
This is going to the left three and down six. There is your graph. All right, next section, find the vertex and axis of symmetry. So your vertex, you're going to change the sign here. So this is gonna be five, keep the sign, negative seven. So your vertex is five, negative seven. Axis of symmetry always starts off as x equals, and then you use that number, the x value of the vertex, the h value. Next one, this would be negative 313. Axis of symmetry is x equals negative three. Vertex for this one, no number inside, so we're gonna call that zero. And then x is zero. And then finally for number 10, vertex is eight, 12. Axis of symmetry, x equals eight. Moving on to page 16, let's check those answers. Going up here at the top, number 11. All right, so given, given your parent function right here, f of x equals absolute value of x, how is this being transformed? So what is the transformation in number 11? So the number in front tells me it's either going to be a stretch or a compression, and since it's a whole number, it's going to be a stretch. So stretch of three. This next one, since it's negative, tells me that that's gonna make it um, open downward. So that's going to be a reflection over the x-axis. And then the one-fourth tells me it's a compression. Of one-fourth. Right, next one, the negative tells me it's a reflection over the x-axis. Just gonna abbreviate, save time. And then, uh, since it's a whole number, that's a stretch. And then finally, this is a compression. Compression of one-fifth. All right, next section. So we want to describe the translation or transformation and then graph it. So this negative tells me it's going to be a reflection. Reflection over the x-axis. The plus one on the inside tells me it's moving left one and the minus three on the outside tells me it's moving down three. I'll put that all together. Left one, down three, and it's going to reflect down. Slope is still one over one. All right, next one. One half tells me it's a compression, so my slope is going to change It's going to move to the right two and up four. Right two, up four, there's my new vertex. And then I'm going to change my slope to one over two. So up one over two, up one over two. Up one over two, up one over two. Two. All right, next one, moving backwards. We're given the graph, we have to write the function rule. So here's my graph. So I'm gonna first of all describe my transformation first. So how is this graph different from the parent function? Well, the parent function's vertex is at zero, zero, at the origin. And this graph moved up two. If 
from the origin. So it's gonna go up to, and I see that it's opening downward, so that's a reflection over the x-axis. Now I'm gonna check the slope just to make sure I don't have a different A term there. One over one, one over one, one over one. So the slope didn't change. So now let's put these two pieces of information into our parent function. Just as review, parent function is f of x equals the absolute value of x. So my transformation, I'm gonna call that g of x. Reflection makes it negative. And then up to is adding to to the outside of the absolute value. And that would be your final answer down there. G of x equals negative absolute value of x plus 2. All right, let's do this one. So from the origin, it's moving to the right 2 and down 6. Let me check the slope here. Up 1, 2, 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3 over 1. So that gives me a stretch of 3. All right, let's put it all together. So that's g of x equals the stretch of three, that's gonna be my a, so that on the outside there, or on the front, sorry. And then absolute value of x, right two would be subtracting two on the inside, down six would be subtracting six on the outside. So g of x equals three, absolute value x minus two, and then minus six. And that concludes your practice.